Okay, I've made some changes to the HTML and to the CSS, just kind of cleaning up some of the stuff we've done so far to make us more room to work with something real. I've also added some text to this. Um, note that I've now set up the HTML with uh, three sections, or four sections rather. Here's the header, which we've worked with before. This is a section called Aside. This is a section called Section. Um, with an idea of main, and then this is a section called footer, which we had before. Um, uh, just to look at the, I guess we can look at it in uh, Firebug. So we've got a body with a wrapper. Inside the wrapper, we've got the header. We've got the aside, which is that those quotes that we had before. This big section called section, and then the footer. All right. So one of the things you might notice right away is that. The, um, there's this big white space here. There's nothing wrong with white space. White space is great. It's just that it's white space we didn't plan on or want. Note that as things get fed in from the HTML to the website, they basically, it's like filling up a bucket upside down. So the first thing in the HTML goes into the bottom or the top of the bucket in this case, and then you fill in with the next thing in HTML, and then the next block item in HTML, and it just kind of fills it up. Um, and because the image is a block item, it, there's no way to get past this without using a, a particular property called float. If we float this, either to the left or to the right, it leaves space for things to move up. So let's start by um, going ahead and, and taking that image, and it's an image tag, image, and we'll say float right. We'll save that and refresh. And what happens in this case is it floats that image off to the right and it says, go ahead with the flow and you can fill in whatever space I leave over. So float can be very powerful for that. We could have floated left and it would have, the rest of the flow would have just gone to the right hand side. So it kind of floats, flows by the float. You float it off to the side and things can then continue to fill in in the regular flow. So um, if we wanted to have this be two columns, the obvious thing to do, of course, would be simply to um, float this one over to the right as well, right? Because then everything else can start to fill into the left. And that is exactly what we do. We take the aside and we say float right. We go over here and it's not going to work. Nothing has really changed except we've uh, removed some of the margin here because by default when margins are, well, whatever, because we move, remove some of the margin. So wh what do we do? It's not working. Well, it, it is floating. It's just that it's 100% wide. It's filling in all the available space already. So if we want it to actually make room for things, we have to set the width and limit the width somewhat. So we'll say the width is limited to, say, 250 pixels. If we refresh this, oops, we'll save this. Did I put that width in the right place? No, I put it on the image, which is not right at all. Put it in the aside, which is what we're trying to do here. <laughs> and then we'll refresh this. And you'll see that it's floated over to the right-hand side. Still a lot to do with margins here. And also note that it kind of it continues to fill in when this is done and just kind of moves back over to the right, which most people don't want. But we do have two columns here, a little bit of work with, with margins, and we'll be in good shape in just a minute.